what is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys how to make your buildings grow instead of after effects so i'm going to be using this footage here with a few different buildings in the background as you can see i also have this person sitting on the ledge of this building here which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to do this effect but as you'll see later in this video there is a way to get around it so it's not going to be too difficult but there are just a few more steps to be able to do this effect so i want this effect to start at the beginning of my clip here so i'm going to go ahead and put my playhead at the very start and what we're going to do is go over to file export and then add to render queue and we're going to go into the output here and change this to png still as well as you want to make sure our composition is all the way trimmed down to that one frame so if you move this little bar on the top of your timeline you're going to see that you can drag it all the way so it's just selecting that one frame here that way it doesn't just go ahead and start exporting all these different frames individually you can also go here and change the output name to whatever you want then you can just go ahead and hit render now let's go ahead and open up Photoshop so we can actually generate or fill our background. So once you have Photoshop open, you just want to create a new project that is the same width and height as your After Effects composition. So I'm going to be using 1920 by 1080 and the resolution is at 100. So we can just go ahead and create that. So once you have your background image imported into Photoshop, we can go ahead and start removing these buildings. And I'm going to go over here to this lasso tool. And if you left click this and hold it, you can go into the polygon lasso. So I'm going to be using this one. And we're going to have to kind of do this in sections because if we do the whole thing here, I'll kind of show you what happens and you'll see that the result won't look the best. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that will look like really quick. As you can see, we removed some of the buildings here, but whatever this is, is not going to work for a photo. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And so like I said earlier, we're going to have to remove sections of this building. So let's go ahead and remove this part right here. So just kind of selecting around different objects. And there we go. Now we have an outline around this area. So let's go ahead and generate fill this and see how this looks. As you can see, it did a lot better job here, but we do have a little bit of a random building in the background here, which could be fine, honestly, but let's see the other options. Yeah, not great. Let's go ahead and type in a prompt, just remove and see what happens there. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So now we just have the background of the sky. Now let's go ahead and do that for this other small little building right here. Select it and then hit generate. And there we go. Now that that building is gone, we can go ahead and move on to this last one here. And what I'm actually going to do is select around this person as well. So it generated fills him out as well as the building. And it looks like that didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So I might have to go ahead and delete this and just generate fill him out first. So selecting him and then AI fill this. This should make it a lot easier for it to understand what I'm trying to do first. And then we can go ahead and mask out the building. So yeah, there we go. That looks a lot better. Now, if I go ahead and select the building like this, we should get a better result. All right, so that just got done. And now you can see we have our AI backgrounds. Honestly, it's a bit cooked. Like this building is not perfect. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and use this first one. I honestly think that should be fine. So let's go ahead and now export this out so we can use this in After Effects. So if you don't know how to export in Photoshop, you just go up to File, Export, and then Export As. Now before I add my background into the timeline here, I'm going to go ahead and go one frame over and split this layer by hitting Control shift d And we can just bring this out quite a ways. And with this layer here, this one frame, right click this and then go to Time and Freeze Frame. And then we can just drag this out around here. It's pretty good. Then we can go ahead and bring in our background that we just created and we want to actually put this below our video layer. So now if you toggle this on and off, you can see how it removes the person and the building. So it looks pretty clean. Now we just have to go ahead and start masking out these buildings individually and animating them. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the pen tool while selecting our video layer. But at the start of our timeline here, we're going to go ahead and create a mask around this left side of the building. And when you're doing this mask, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but if you take your time, then it will definitely look better. So we have our building masked out now, but as you can see on the edge, it doesn't look too great. It's pretty like harsh and it doesn't look too realistic as just like a normal one off building. So to fix this, let's go ahead and duplicate this by hitting control D and on the bottom layer, let's right click this and go to transform and flip horizontal and you should see it appears over here. Now we're actually going to drag this over and almost create like our own little building by rotating it around. So something like this looks pretty good. Actually, let's just fix this mask here so it blends together. Now, obviously that doesn't look great, but if you turn this off and on, you can see it just makes it look a lot more 3D and more realistic. And we'll go ahead and fix this problem here. As you can see, it like overlays over our foreground, but we don't have to worry about that right now. We can go ahead and fix that later. But there we go. Now we have our first building done. So let's go ahead back on that top layer, hit control D, 
and then hit M to open up your mask. And you want to just go ahead and delete that mask we created. Now you can see our buildings are back here. Let's go back into the pen tool and start messing out our second building. And you want to follow what you did for that last mask. So wherever you kind of ended off on that building, you want to start your new mask there. So now we have our second part of the building here. As you can see, we have the same issue where it just looks super flat and not 3D. So once again, duplicate this layer, right click it, go to transform and flip horizontal. What you can even do is hit S on the keyboard to open up the scale. And we're gonna undo this chain here so we can actually scale the height and the width individually. So I'm gonna scale the height like this. So it's super stretched out, maybe that's a little bit too much, but now we can fill in that area with that same color brick. So it looks pretty realistic. Obviously it's not great, but it's gonna be a super quick animation, so you shouldn't really tell too much. But once that's done, we're just gonna go ahead and do that same thing, duplicating the top layer, deleting that mask, and let's go ahead and mask out our next building. All right, so we just got done masking out all of the buildings here. So I just kind of skipped these last two, but what I did is kind of duplicated the side of this building and then mirrored it. So pretty much the same process. But then for this last one, I didn't have to do anything. It already looked good. So I just used this one layer and as you can see with it on and off, that's what it looks like. But now we got to go ahead and fix this area. As you can see, this looks terrible, especially on his feet or I guess his legs. It just randomly cuts off. So what we're going to do is duplicate this layer that has the building in original footage. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the mask. So now I have our original footage back and I'm going to go into the pen tool and create an outline around the edge of this here. So whatever your foreground is, and you might not even have to do this if you don't have anything in the foreground of your shop. But if you have something blocking the buildings like I do here, then you're going to have to be doing this or else you're going to have the same issue that I have. So you want to make sure you spend your time on this actually. So the buildings actually look like they're in the background and you don't have any weird clipping issues. So I'll be right back once I'm done doing my masking. As you can see, if I turn this off and on, you can see it fixes the issue. I'm just going to go ahead and change this label color to like red so I can easily see that this is our foreground and I'm not going to be touching this. Now we can go ahead and start animating the buildings to pop in. Now for every building that you had to duplicate and make, I guess, 3D, you're going to have to pre-compose those layers. So our first one, these two layers here, select them, right click it, and then go to pre-compose and just make sure that you have this setting here toggled on as well as this and just hit OK. Let's move on to the second building and do that same thing. And there we go. Now we have our three buildings pre-composed. And like I said earlier, I didn't have to do anything for this last one. So we can just go ahead and leave that as its original layer. So I'm going to go ahead and animate this first building by hitting P on the keyboard to open up the position. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the stopwatch at the original values and just drag this out a few frames. And then at the start, you want to go ahead and bring this Y value down. So it's below your footage and you don't see it. So now when you play the back, you should see you have that building appearing onto the screen. Let's go ahead and repeat that for the next building. So on the next one, hit P on that layer and drag this frame out quite a ways, but we want this one to start halfway through our first animation. So in between these keyframes, drag our Y value down. Now you can see we have both of those animations and let's just go ahead and keep repeating this process for the next ones. All right, so I just got done animating all my buildings. As you can see, my keyframes laid out here and here we go. Now my animation is done for my buildings. As you can see, it already looks super clean. Another thing, if you don't have motion blur enabled for these layers, you wanna go over here and make sure that that is enabled as well as this toggle on for your composition. That's gonna help smooth out the animation. If you want, you can also smooth out these keyframes by selecting them, hitting F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. And it's gonna create just a little bit more of a smooth animation. As you can see, if I go into the graph editor for one of these animations, it's gonna be more of like a ramp instead of a linear line. So if you like how that looks, then you can go ahead and keep that. Now we actually want our video to start playing after that animation happens. So bring that video layer back in and you wanna align that with the last animation here. It already looks pretty clean, but what I'm gonna do is add some shake to this to help sell the animation and make everything come together. So let's go ahead and pre-compose all these layers by selecting them like this. And now as you can see, everything is just bundled into that one layer. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new adjustment layer by hitting Control Alt Y and just trimming it down so it starts at the end of our animation. I'm also gonna enable motion blur on that adjustment layer. And I'm gonna be using one of my shake presets here. So in my shake in folder, I'm gonna be using my shake Y small. So just bring this onto that adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and play that back and see how it looks. 
as you can see that just helps sell the animation and hides a little bit of the imperfections in this animation so i'd highly recommend applying some different shakes if you want to use one of my shakes from my preset pack you can go ahead and download it link down in the description below there's tons of different shake presets here and they're super easy to use let's go ahead and try the shake wine rotate and see how that looks that also looks super cool in this effect. Another thing I like to do is add a little bit of an animation to the camera. So on this pre-composed layer, I'm going to open up the scale by hitting S and then hold down shift and P and that will open up the position values as well. Let's go to where that animation ends and our shake starts right here. Set a keyframe for a position and scale. Let's go to the start, scale this footage in and then kind of move it so it looks at the first building here of our animation. As well as you want to make sure you have motion blur enabled for that layer. And yeah, that definitely makes the effect look a lot better. It just adds a lot more motion to the footage. And if you want to smooth those keyframes out, once again, you can select them and hit F9. And that's just going to easy ease those keyframes. And there we go. That is how you create this building grow effect inside of After Effects. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.